So today we're going to talk about 40 CTs and let's describe the phases in those and what is a MIP, what is an average, how many slices are in a 40 CT, and what is a prospective 40 CT. So first, the phases in a 40 CT, and this is important to know for your clinical life and then obviously for this exam as well. So phase zero is full inspiration. That's important because when we are going to get all of these different phases and you reconstruct it and you bring it into your treatment planning system and run and see if maybe you need gating or you see how much the tumor moves within the breathing cycle, knowing what each phase is, is advantageous. So phase 50%, so phase 50% is a full expiration. And then phase 100% is full inspiration again. So that's what we have for our different phases. And like I said, that's important to know. If nothing else, really to ground yourself in understanding these four DCTs. So now what is MIP? So MIP is the maximum recorded CT numbers for each voxel. This is good for determining ITV, potentially GTV, and is often used for lung cases where the thing you are wanting to contour or investigate is more dense than the surrounding materials around it, like a tumor is in lung. Now, how about the average? The average is more representative of the mean density of a patient. So this is actually better for dose. Now, how many slices in 40 CT? So obviously this is going to vary. It's going to vary depending on your pitch, on how big of a window you have set. But I would say you can get up to 1,500 CT slices in a 40 or 40 CT. So it can collect images only during the inspiration or expiration, which is what this prospective is. And then for a dose, that could be around 75 milligray, which note that is about three times more than a, just a normal CT dose. So the 40 CT, as I mentioned, allows you to find the tumor position in the X, Y, Z, and time. It does obviously take longer, and there is more CT dose. One thing, TG76 is a great resource for 40 CTs in respiratory motion. Definitely reference this within your answer. Prospective, like I mentioned, are images only in a specific phase. But what I didn't mention here, there is also retrospective. So I'll put over here, retrospective is imaging in all phases. Im imaging all phases. So as you can tell just from that, there's more dose and you take the images in the entire respiratory cycle and it sorts them into groups based on phase. While I'm here, while we're talking, there is also something called the MINIP. So we got the MIP, the average, and now a MINIP. And this is the minimum intensity projection. It is the full excursion of a tumor of lower density than the surrounding material. So this is really advantageous for something like liver. So would, and final thing, like could you do a 4D on a breast patient? And which would, what type of cases would you use a 4D on? Because in your clinic, if you don't do 4D CTs, it's good to know when could you use them and just familiarize yourself with the, the topic. So 4D CTs are great for lung, liver. Typically, you wouldn't do this for breast. You potentially could, but adding margins, I think, are better. And that's typically what is seen in most clinics. So this is 40 CT. If you have any questions, comment below. I'd happy to help. And something that I think a topic you definitely need to brush up on for the exam. And I wish you all the best.
happy studying.